So let's talk about best practices for inputs. So I want you to take a guess, which are the most complex UI elements? If you've guessed inputs, then you are correct. They may look simple, but in reality, due to their versatility, different states, and frequent use, they can be very hard to figure out. But when you do get inputs right and they're designed really well, they allow users to input data in a way that is quick, easy, and correct. So let's jump right in. So these are the types of inputs that you're probably going to encounter the most in your career. Here we got some basic inputs. Now there are a variety of input types that we use to collect user data. Depending on what types of questions or requirements your form may have, you will need to pick the right one. So the first one I have here is a text field. Now these text fields are used for short written responses. Users can add only one line of text. If your text does get too long, it will automatically scroll the content left so you can continue to see what you're entering. So if I were to start entering a name here, it would just push the rest of the content left and you just be able to continue to see everything. The next is a text area. Now, sometimes you may need to incorporate an input for longer responses. This is where the text area comes into play. These are taller than a regular text field, and as you can see, look at the difference, and allows for users to enter multiple lines of text. When the text does reach the bottom of this container, it will automatically expand downwards. Some text areas allow users to adjust the width and height manually. It's just going to depend how it's coded by the developers. Next, we have drop-down menus, or selects. These are used when there are multiple options a user needs to choose from. When you click the input, a menu will appear just below where the user will see the predefined options. When a user selects an option, it will appear in the input field that they just clicked. It's best to use drop-down menus when a user needs to select from more than five options, but not too many because then it becomes a little bit of an accessibility issue. Next, we have checkboxes. Checkboxes are typically used when there are one or multiple options for the user to select from. Users can make multiple selections here, as you can see. Try using these when there are four or less options to choose from. And next, we have radio buttons. Now these look pretty similar to the checkbox, but the interaction is entirely different. These are used for multiple options, but, and this is big, users can only select one option here. Similar to the checkbox, try keeping the options to four or less. So if I were to have option three selected and I go to select option one, it would automatically uncheck or unselect three, and one would be the only option selected. If you do wanna select multiple options, use the checkbox. Now there are some advanced inputs, and let's get into that. So sometimes these inputs are not enough for what we're asking of a user. Some questions can get pretty complex and also some interactions. So let's look at some examples of that. Right now we have the multi-select text field. So what you can do here is these fields allow users to add multiple inputs. Generally when a user enters an input, it will be displayed like as a chip. And this is what a chip looks like. I mean, you can design it differently, but typically it's a, just it has the content in the middle and then it has an exit or a removal icon to the right. Now, it will be displayed as a chip and then the user can add another. Users are also able to remove chips that they previously entered. So this is typically what a multi-select text field would look like. And this is a drop-down search. If there are a bunch of options within your drop-down menu, you should consider adding some sort of contextual search. The way this interaction works is when a user begins typing, available options that match the user's search will filter. It saves the user a bunch of time. So if I were to type in like an address or like a country or something like that, so this input says country, but it could just say something like address, then it's just so much more easier than just inputting everything manually. Or if they need to search for a specific country, then they could just start typing and the list would come up over here of suggested results. So it just saves the user a bunch of time. And that's it for advanced inputs. These are typically all the types of inputs that you would see, both basic and advanced or some sort of variation. I mean, there are many more. There are date pickers, uh, and date pickers are used when we want to, our user to select a date or a date range. It really depends on the type of product you're building. So there are a bunch of inputs out here, but this is what you're typically going to be using most of the time.